Keep watching to find out how Greg cooks a crunchy, juicy roast pork on the barbecue. Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Although video is uncut, it will be four parts of this video because I don't want to make a long video with a lot of nonsense. So I created the first part is about barbecue thermometer, the second part about barbecue, the third part is about how to prepare the roast and the fourth part how to cook the roast and final result. So today we're making best roast ever. Why? Because people say that I cooked pretty good roast and I heard this before but then we invited neighbors over and they said it's the best roast that they ever tasted. Then we invited relatives, they were impressed with as well. So, you know, people are asking me, why wouldn't you share your secret with the internet? I don't have a secret. So, hey, but there are a couple of tips to consider to make roast perfect. So, before we start, can you please do me a huge favor? Can you please subscribe to my channel, click like, hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future videos. Today, we start with barbecue thermometer. Why do we need one? We don't. Uh, and some barbecues got a thermometer on a hood and that could be good enough to indicate what is inside the barbecue. But if you make a roast and roast would um, be different in size and would be uneven as well. And every point of that meat would have a different temperature even though you may have the best barbecue ever and your temperature inside the barbecue all equal. So what do I do? Um, I had uh, before thermometers with one probe, I had uh, with two probes and this is my third attempt to quality meat cooking. It's a four probe thermometer. So what I'll do, I stick one probe on one side of the meat close to the top, another close to the bottom on opposite side, and then same do on the sides of the meat. So however meat is uneven, the thermometer will tell me true temperature at every single part of the meat. And if we're lucky enough, we'll see the difference today, but the biggest difference I've ever seen in cooking meat, and my barbecue is uh, distributing heat evenly, 23 degrees and difference in cooked meat inside. So, you know, if you're using one probe, you may undercook meat. If you use only one probe and, you know, you an opposite scale, you can overcook meat and make it uh, too crispy. So this one is your first step to ensure that your meat is cooked properly. And before I continue with what's inside, I'll put link down below where I got mine. And by the way, I got it by uh, sheer chance. The, the, the brand is quite uh, reputable, it's called Inkbird. Uh, but, um, uh, and it's a lot of good feedback about this, but the way I discovered what good for, for me, it was long way, probably took me four good years. And I explain why this thermometer is most perfect one ever. First one is, you know, as you can see, the, the quality of packaging. I've got it already for two years and we cook roast on a weekly basis. I open and close this one every week and still it looks like new. Maybe not inside uh, because it's subjected to quite high temperatures. But, you know, at least outside the box, even though it's made of carton, it's actually stay in one piece and uh, looking pretty presentable. Another feature of this um, thermometer, why it's so good, uh, it's smart Wi-Fi and uh, Inkbird got their own application. And you ask yourself, oh, look, why do I need Wi-Fi thermometer? You know, um, there's no need to be smart about this. I challenge you on that. If you buy non-smart thermometer, you're bound to your barbecue. And if your roast cooks like mine for three hours, you constantly need to go outside and check temperature. The second option to buy Bluetooth. 
while it's great you cannot leave your house because bluetooth um, workable range is around 10 meters so if you buy bluetooth which is great you can uh, check all the temperatures from application the moment you're out of bluetooth range it will drop off and uh, it would become useless this one i can go with kit play in in a uh on, on a kid's uh, playground, I can go visit friends and, 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 and uh, other people around. I can just go for a walk and I would know at every point in time how my meat is going. And I can get back home just in time to stop barbecue uh, uh, and turn it off. So, you know, it saves you time, it saves you effort. And um, there's an alarm system also inside the application. So you can just set your temperatures and five degrees before meat ready it will alarm you so you know how much time you've got left i think um, wi-fi smart barbecue thermometers or you can use it pretty much for everything it's actually way to go and they're not that much more expensive uh, if you go to if you're in australia if you go to bunnings and buy what they call dumb thermometer it would cost you i don't know um 30 40 dollars smart thermometer I don't know how much it costs now. I'll check uh, when I uh, provide you with link, but it should not cost most more, should not cost more than hundred dollars. And you know what? It should serve a couple of good years. Another good point of this thermometer: there's a battery, lithium-ion battery, inbuilt, so it's rechargeable and rechargeable mechanism. It's USB Type C, so I didn't need to buy any. Um, uh, power adapter for this. I'm just charging it with my uh, phone charger. I charge it probably every fifth time, so it depletes approximately five to ten percent of the battery every three hours of cooking. So battery lasts forever. It's pretty amazing, and also it's magnetic, so you can you know stick on your walls or whatever. I don't use that feature, but you know it's pretty handy, and it has. Um, uh, uh, light inside so if you cook in in the dark you can easily press button and it will light up and tell you what temperatures are if you're not using your application if you use application on the smartphone or tablet you know problem solved so let's see what's inside i quickly try to open it and show you what's inside and sorry for presentation the um it's not unboxing i'm using the device for the last two years so obviously it's in the used condition but i think i'm looking at uh after it quite well, so it's in good condition. So that's the thermometer itself. Um, and if you turn it on, it lights up, checks, and there will be no readings. Uh, reason is that because probe's not attached, but you can see it's nice orange color and show you battery indicator. And I didn't charge battery for last three times and it's still 100% full. Um, Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi signal came through so it's connected to my Wi-Fi. I can see things through application um, And you can choose the temperature Celsius or Fahrenheit. I turned off for now um, And I'll show you later when I'm actually cooking Now you've got uh, on the back side. You've got four ports. This is where you plug your probes Probes uh, need to be unplugged so you can cook, the, uh, cook them. You can clean them after cooking and it's uh, nice to keep um, uh, connectors you know not exposed to moisture or anything like that on the other side you've got a uh, charger which is your usb type c uh, charges pretty quickly and and i've got no complaints about that and which will last forever so it's quite thick but you know it's not it's not heavy or anything very very good unit the box itself is actually pretty good too uh, it fits neatly inside I always um uh, clean it and, and put it back in so as you can see two two and a half years I'm reusing it you wouldn't even probably pick and tell me that it's a used item but I cannot say same about probes probes are you know copping some beating because if you think about this they're exposed to uh, I cook my roast for three hours on a weekly basis so what's the 52 weeks uh, a year probably um, don't cook every weekend but uh, if you assume that I cook 40 roasts a year, right? And temperature in barbecue when I'm cooking roast is 160 degrees for last two years. So we've got at least, you know, 80 to 100 exposures for three hours for very hot temperatures. And you probably will see, I'm cleaning them well, but when I I'm, 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 uh, open the box, you probably see that um, 
not everything will be cleaned out of our probes after cooking. So probes are quite interesting. So they got different colors. So we've got green, I guess, blue, orange, and yellow. So it's not, it doesn't really matter, but if you wanted to memorize where you plugged each of your probes, um, and then you can see clearly it's marked one, two, three, four here, you can see which probe where showing your temperature. It doesn't really matter, but it's nice that they color coded it. So probe would be stainless steel wiring that's quite flexible. And at the end, you've got uh, protection where wire goes inside the probe and it's covered by heat resistant rubber. As you can see, rubber a little bit discolored and of course it's got the, all the smoke from me so I cannot clean it anymore. But you know what, all four probes are functional. I say they've been used more than 100 times already. At the end of the probe, you've got um, protection, uh, like rubber protection because they're quite sharp. So you don't want to get uh, spiked by probe. So every time that I pick on, pick them, I tie them well because you don't want to break the wire, otherwise they will stop reading. And also put protection and clean them up. So this is how I store them every day. Just before using it, I won't show it in the video, but I untied the... Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, sorry, I'll, I'll untie the... Um, I want to tie the uh, um, uh, probe and then um, basically lay them all down and then stick in the meat when they're ready and um, uh, start barbecue. So there's nothing else I would like to tell about probe. Um, if you interested how it comes, it comes in a box. Uh, you've got your um, warranty card, which I believe they still would supply, uh, your notes and um, uh, instruction book so you know it's pretty all straightforward so this is part one video i would like to ensure that you understand that um, good cooking requires good tools like with everything so first of all is when you know temperature of your meat all around uh, you make good decisions when to stop cooking so you won't overcook and won't undercook then you need good barbecue that's number two you need good meat and then you need good timing when you start and how you i don't marinate, marinate my roast but i'll stuff it with um, um, garlic and i also season it on top and i'll explain about it a little bit later thank you so much for watching part one i'll see you part two when i show you my barbecue welcome back my friends and channel subscribers greg here with part two about the barbecue Everyone has a choice of barbecue and, you know, um, I've been through a couple of them and we stopped with Weber and I'm not promoting brand um, at all, but uh, to be honest, uh, we had the very cheap barbecues, we had quite expensive ones and Weber is the one that sits right in the middle of that trench where it does perfectly whatever you throw at it and it's enough for small family like ours and i believe many people having good luck with weber so uh this uh, weber barbecue is i think at the moment the largest family q size um you may see probably when i open it it's uh it's a smoke the colors are probably gone um mind you we've got it already for six years and um, it's functioning well and never failed on us. We use it on a weekly basis almost every week. So it's been through a lot. The Weber, um, I cannot recommend high enough. Uh, as I said, we're cooking on a weekly basis. We're probably going through maybe one, one and a half cylinders of gas a year. When we had a cheap barbecue, one bottle of gas was enough probably for four barbecues and to be honest the cheap barbecues cost you more in gas than weber and uh, gas that you buy for weber uh, in probably a span of five years but quality of meats quality of other things that you cook on a, on a weber it's unparalleled it's such a good barbecue and again i'm not promoting brand i'm just overwhelmed 
how good and easy uh, you can cook on, on, on Weber. So let's open up and again I say it's probably a little bit discolored but uh, trust me it's clean, uh, clean like every week but you know when you're using barbecue for so long uh, it's really hard to get it perfectly, um, perfectly clean uh, from color perspective. Okay let's open up and see what we've got there. As you can see uh, we've got flaps which basically uh, we have a version of side tables for barbecue. There's igniter there, uh, hood which we open up for now to um, uh, air out a little bit and second flap I established that. Um, at the bottom you've got uh, uh, oil container where oil drips down there and I recommend if you got Weber always cook with the hood closed that way you can achieve perfect temperature and the reason why we using uh, probes not to open the hood the moment you open the hood you distort temperature inside barbecue so the key to good cooking on Weber would be closed hood however you tempted to open it and check your cooking try to avoid that and your roast or anything else that you cook would be just perfect what else we've got on the web we've got two knobs which one is a uh, small uh, gas line and one is a big one big one goes around as an O shape and um, small is basically a small pipe that goes in the middle so if you would like even cooking you need to use them all well, Weber would be even cooking anyway because the way the hood design the barbecue but to get consistently I say consistently uh, good distribution of heat and meat cooking I still use both of them and because it's powerful enough I turn them on all minimum I do not adjust I, I choose minimal setting and cook on minimal setting um, two kilo roast for three hours approximately and again I'm not cooking for a particular time my probes will tell me when meat is ready so that's all now for barbecue uh, I also show you before we start barbecue is how to prep your barbecue for roasting there's a bit of um, tips and tricks how to make your roast not to burn from the top or not to burn from the bottom and there's a couple of tips and tricks that I would like to show you so you understand how important to prep barbecue and heat distribution inside quite well all right I will see you in a part three when I prep the meat and I put it on a barbecue season it and we start it all together thank you so much for watching Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here again with part number three where I prepare barbecue, uh, season the meat and start. I apologize there's a little bit of wind pick up and it's quite windy here so if you hear any wind disturbance I don't have any influence on that. Ideally it would be perfect conditions but not always happens. So what we've got here and it's quite important what we do right now and I explain why. So first what we've got is is alfoil or aluminium foil doesn't matter what brand you choose um, what is important to cover center of the barbecue so direct heat would not impact me from the top the idea is the heat will go around the barbecue bounce on top of the lid and then descend down on the meat right and there's a cutting required after you put layer of aluminium foil I put double layer I will show you reason is that is pork or we cooking pork or even lamb will shed a lot of fat and fat need to go through those holes and by the way we're using pork but if you for religious or other beliefs not using pork uh, feel free to use any other meat for what I'm describing right now it's meat agnostic so any meat would do even chicken so we need aluminium foil I'll explain later what we do with that uh, when we season our meat, you can use any oil. I use uh, macadamia oil. Uh, you can use avocado oil. You can use macadamia oil. You can use coconut oil. Please do not use any poisonous oils like vegetables, so it's like canola, 
like peanut uh, oils, uh, any nut, other nut oils. Um, don't use any sunflower oils or something like that. What happens is they're already denatured, so we don't want to touch that. Also, do not use olive oil. Olive oil is very sensitive to heat and getting denatured the moment you turn barbecue on. So you would like your meat be not only tasty but also nutritious. And you know, when people tell me I follow ketogenic lifestyle or low carb lifestyle, if people tell me that ketogenic diet is boring, uh, today is a good example to show everyone that ketogenic diet is far, far, far from boring. Opposite, you know, everyone that I show but vegetarians, everyone that I show result of me cooking that roast uh, would say, you know what, that's really exciting uh, um, taste. Anyway, so I'm using macadamia oil. Feel free to use avocado oil coconut oil or uh, macadamia oil I'm using. And then when you choose salt, I'm just using a container from a cheaper salt, but uh, salt that you're using is very important. People believe the salt is salt, but no. Uh, Himalayan salt, which is pink, or sea salt have many more minerals and, and vitamins that you may believe it is. So do not use um, uh, cheap salt you can buy in a supermarket because again uh, if you cook in something like that you would like it to be not only delicious but also good for you so all right let's start uh, actually before we start on other uh, on other side we've got uh, the cut of meat I'm just about to barbecue and as you can see there's a lot of garlic so as a part of meat seasoning we will stuff garlic inside the meat more is better garlic will uh, relieve all the juices and meat will absorb it it won't get that harsh garlic taste and if you don't like it at the end you can remove it but it will create beautiful garlicky smoke that will uh, hot smoke the whole meat also will create taste um, that you would uh, you would like so spend a little bit of my time stuffing meat with garlic and then season it in t on top with oil and when it's seasoned with oil so it won't burn you can put uh, salt and be generous with salt because the salt that you put on top uh, with juices and and smoke will get inside the meat and make it salty so don't think that it will be just salty on top and not salty inside it will evenly distribute and be generous with it you literally cannot go um, wrong with it if you put too much don't go overboard don't put layer like that but you know uh, generous put generous amount on top let's start and I'll show what I do with alpha because it's most important bit all right what we start is we're taking aluminium foil and we're also prepping the uh, barbecue green so that's what I'm roasting as a roasting um, rack so we'll put roasting rack in the middle before we start and take alpha foil um, just measure approximately double length, right? Oh, it's pretty windy. And then fold it in two. So you guys, it's pretty windy. It's challenging to work with it. And when you measure, put the aluminium paper under the cooking rack or, or roasting rack like that, right? And when you do this. Take a thin knife like that or, or similar and cut every second um, hole along a barbecue so fat can sit through. I will show what it looks like when I finish. But it is important, the heat would not get through those holes but fat will drip down and, and it's, it's quite important it doesn't matter it's not perfect just make sure it is there because you don't want a fat to burn and create uh, a lot of conservations because you can denature even stable fat right so i'll quickly show what it looks like it looks like uh, I'm not sure if it's visible, but there are holes every second kind of road um, all along the barbecue. So 
we've got enough space around the barbecue for heat to go up and not to burn meat from the bottom and when it goes up it goes from the sides out so meat will cook evenly okay i'll put camera back where it was before and what we'll do now we'll position meat on a barbecue and we stuff it with garlic inside so most of the meals will have holes because it's not whole meat it's basically folded so what you do is kind of look in where um, entries are and stuff garlic as you go let's do it quickly uh, it's not important to be even uh, because the uh, temperature and juices will push garlic uh, juices around but you know if you can distribute it evenly it would be a little bit more beneficial so I use the whole knob of garlic for roast like this uh, you don't have to use that much but if you do you won't regret it because it will smell nice and it will taste great all right all garlics are in now second most important bit is do you remember how i was describing uh barbecue probes so i've got probes like that and we've got uh attachment so what we will do we'll put probe on one side to the top of the roast all the way in so it will stick out like that we'll leave it like that the second one would go to the opposite side at the bottom so the first one is the top one side the second is bottom this side right and again put lid on the side all right the third one would come on the top of in a bit So I actually put it in the bottom of in a bit, so this side will be on the top here. And this one would go towards the top there. So alright, we've got four probes, two on each side here and two on each side there. So now we've got four probes so we can measure temperature. The second bit is Put olive. Make sure that you oil. Make sure that oil does not drip on a on aluminium foil. Just go bit by bit and try to massage it into meat and touch sides as well. So oil done. So you won't denature top of the fatty bit of the of the meat because the temperature is high as here. And if we don't do that, um, it will. I don't want to go into details what happens to fat, but it will it will denature not so stable pork uh, skin here. So when we feel that it's actually quite moisturized as as like really really um, oily surface, so so uh, it won't burn, and also the salt can stick on. We finish and I quickly. Put it down now what we've got we've got uh, salt and as I say we put a really generous amount of salt on top of it and then massage it in so it will be even all the way around like really really good amount of salt it's really hard to overdo salt on the on the roasting Don't go too hard. I'll quickly get the baby wipe to wipe my hands from all the oils and and salt. Now we can close barbecue. Make sure that lids are staying long. Now make sure that everything is off. Open the gas. Put it on high just to start barbecue. 
where we get started. I turn it back on low, both knobs, and connect the um, uh, temperature probes. I will show you what happens when I connect the probes, but first I need to connect them all one by one. So number four, and then number three, and then number two, and then number one. So all probes are connected now. And then I leave my thermometer here, barbecue started, and I'll show you what happens when I turn it on. Oh, sorry. So when I turn it on, it should already identify temperatures inside. All right. So as you can see already, there's a big difference in temperatures on top and the bottom, probably the way it was in the fridge. So you've got two probes registering five degrees, one three degrees and one seven degrees. So that's a deviation in temperature we've got at the moment. So I think now it takes approximately three hours to cook the roast. And when it's done, I will show you the result. So until next part, which is final part, and hopefully it will look beautiful. It is definitely will be tasting beautiful. And uh, that would be one of the best roasts you can cook. See you next part, the final one. Oh, well, here we are. We're starting Inber Pro application. And as you can see, we've got one thermometer uh, recording through the Wi-Fi. When we tap on it, we've got uh, four probes. We've got the temperature. To define temperature, we go into the temperature gauge, choosing meat that we're cooking. I choose custom, and my meat is ready at 73 degrees, and we set up. So we've got first one, and second one, we've got to do the same. Pork, custom, 73 degrees, set up. So as you can see, we've got first one at 5 degrees currently, second one at 3, and we've got at 73 degrees alarm. And then fourth, the same, pork, custom, at 73 degrees, set up. 73 degrees, it's when on my experience, meat at the best. It's not burned, it's not undercooked. And then last one is this, custom, and 73 degrees all right so this is how invert application looking like so we've got a probe number one we've got five degrees we've got 73 to be alarmed and then we can plot the graph we can uh, do uh, uh, different I know settings with uh, a timer which is not important right now but what's most important is to make sure that all probes will stop at 73 degrees and on my experience when i've got for example this probe a registering fire of a higher temperature or even this one if they finish first i still wait for last one to be 73 degrees so i adjust the highest temperature to stop alarm but when you know when it finishes it will alarm sound what's also important is to see uh the um uh, battery indicator on top so we already use it five times and battery is still at 86 uh, percent which is great it will be plenty of time for me to use more without recharging all right see you next time when meat is ready hello again greg here looks like barbecue is ready to be switched off how do i know first of all i checked on my mobile and secondly i've got all the digits here so temperature wise all sensors are different, but temperature is right for me to be cooked. I still don't know what's inside. So what I'll do, I'll turn the gas off and we open barbecue lid all together. Let's do that. Okay. The barbecue is off. Let's open it all together and see what's inside. Wow. A look at that. And that's what I call perfection. Okay. What I'll do, I'll put it on the plate. 
And then we will take it for cutting. What are you doing, Daddy? I'm cutting pork for us. Thank you, Mommy. I'm not Mommy. I'm not Mommy. I'm not Mommy. Okay. okay. Mommy, we're taking probes out. Why did you say I'm Mommy? The little one is hungry. This is why he is here. The probe sounding, that means it's already. Yeah, okay. Mommy. What we'll do, we'll take it on the plate. Why do you not take it on the plate? Oh. Trust me, it's pretty good. Let's take and cut and see what's inside. All right, the last part is most exciting to cut it and see how cooked it is inside. Uh, look how juicy it is. It is pretty amazing. Oh, that's really good piece. We can break the crackling. Ah, look at that crackling. Look at that crackling. Perfectly done. Let me show you how good it is. Oh. That's really well cooked and I'm pretty sure little one and my wife will enjoy it quite well. Let's cut little pieces for them. See how consistently good it is. This is what I call perfection of the barbecue, thermometer and method of cooking. And as you can see, probably in, in a camera, the garlics are inside, they're almost they're not disintegrated, but they are um, leaching all the juice inside the meat, so it will smell like garlic as well. It does smell like garlic. It's absolutely perfect. Let's keep cutting. Let's keep cutting. That's exactly what I expected. And I think everyone is excited as myself to try some. You know, nothing that you buy in a shop will be as good as this. And if you make it from a scratch, besides, you know, you buy uh, proper pork or lamb in a shop, um, everything else you can do yourself and the way you adjust your recipe will be your final taste. But you know, what I want to show, if you got probes and if you cook it well, you've got perfect crackling on top. And this is me going right through the middle right now. And meat is perfectly cooked all the way through. That's what we wanted to see. If you like this video or any of other videos on my channel, please subscribe, like, hit the bell button, and I create more videos about cooking products like Brevo or other products I've got in my household or just general fitness and nutrition. Thank you so much for watching. Until next video.